Welcome to the awards ceremony. Thank you for virtually attending the Oklahoma Historical Society's annual awards ceremony. The Society is pleased to honor institutions, teachers, students, authors, and historians who have contributed to this state's historic record. Every year, we have some very deserving award recipients. This year, we have four from our 2020 Historians Hall of Fame in addition to two from our 2021. Congratulations to all our award recipients. David Levy, Outstanding Book on Oklahoma History. Breaking Down Barriers, George McLaren and the Struggle to End Segregated Education. National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. Outstanding Regional Historical Museum. Priya George, the Joseph B. Thoburn Student Historian Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Study of Oklahoma History. Linda Wilson, the Muriel H. Wright Award for the outstanding article appearing in the Chronicles of Oklahoma, Women's Suffrage in Oklahoma and Indian Territories, 1890 through 1907. Greg Oppel, the William B. Pennington Teacher Award for outstanding instruction in the field of Oklahoma history. Bradley Fritch, the Outstanding Thesis on Oklahoma History, Culture on the Prairie, Celebrating Oklahoma's Art Museums and Their Contributors in the 20th Century. Oklahoma Genealogical Society, Outstanding OHS Support Organization. Steve Ripley. In 1950, Steve Ripley was born in Boise, Idaho. His family soon moved back to their family farm near Glencoe on land his family acquired in the 1889 Oklahoma land run. After graduating from Glencoe High School, he earned a degree in communications from Oklahoma State University. Ripley played in bands throughout his youth and in 1972 created the label Red Dirt Records. He is considered a pioneer in the region's red dirt music genre. Ripley worked as a sound engineer for Leon Russell and the Jim Halsey Company. In 1982, Ripley created the company Ripley Guitars, inventing the stereo guitar famously used by Eddie Van Halen, Ry Cooter, and Dweezil Zappa. He played guitar for J.J. Kale, Bob Dylan, and other musicians before he returned to Tulsa and purchased the famed church studio. In 1994, Ripley formed the Grammy-nominated country band The Tractors. Steve and his wife Charlene moved back to the family farm. They single-handedly saved Leon Russell's collection of master audio recordings, films, instruments, and other memorabilia, bringing it back from Nashville. They also collected the recording equipment from Oklahoma City's Gene Sullivan Studios. Ripley worked with the OHS to create the 20-part radio show on Oklahoma rock and roll. He also engineered the OHS OK Pop album release of rediscovered Bob Wills music. As the OK Pop Museum became closer to reality, Ripley worked to digitize Leon Russell's unique 40-track recordings for the new exhibits and archives. Steve Ripley passed in January of 2019. Melvina Heisch. In 1952, Melvina Heisch, then Thurman, was born in Pennsylvania where her dad was serving in the military. At a young age, the family returned to Roger Mills County to operate the family farm near the town of Radon. She attained her undergraduate degree from Southwestern State College in Weatherford and a graduate degree in public history from Oklahoma State University. After interning at the Oklahoma Historical Society, Heisch began working for the newly created Oklahoma State Historic Preservation Office under the leadership of Dr. Howard Meredith. 
In 1980, she became the Oklahoma Deputy State Historic Preservation Officer, a post she held for 37 years. During this time, Heisch increased the number of National Register listings from a little over 200 to well over 1,300. In 1982, Melvina edited the book, Women in Oklahoma, A Century of Change. She also contributed a number of entries for the Encyclopedia of Oklahoma History and Culture and several articles for the Chronicles of Oklahoma. Heisch served on the board of directors for the National Conference of State Historic Preservation Officers and as a member of the Federal Advisory Council for the National Park Service's Route 66 Corridor Preservation Program. In 1996, Heisch received the National Preservation Honor Award for her leadership in Oklahoma's State Historic Preservation Office. In 2015, she received the U.S. Secretary of Interior Historic Preservation Award. The next year, the Oklahoma Route 66 Hall of Fame inducted Heisch. In 2017, Melvina Heisch retired after more than four decades of service to the Oklahoma Historical Society. Jack Frank. A native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Jack Frank moved to Oklahoma to attend the University of Tulsa. As a student, he worked as a reporter and earned his degree in telecommunications in 1977. He started his career with the radio station KRAV in Tulsa. Frank later attained a position as the station manager for the Oklahoma Educational Television Authority in Tulsa. There he began airing segments from the television station's archival footage that featured places and events in Tulsa's history. Frank later created Jack Frank Productions and has produced more than a dozen documentaries related to Oklahoma and Tulsa history, including Tulsa Deco, Tulsa A to Z, and the Glen Pool Story. Frank is also a partner at the PR firm Schnocky, Turnbow, and Frank. He is on the board of directors for the Tulsa Historical Society, the Salvation Army of Tulsa, and the Tulsa Foundation for Architecture. Gaston Litton. In 1948, he relocated to Norman and started the manuscript division of the University of Oklahoma Library with funding from the Rockefeller Foundation. This eventually combined with the university's Frank Phillips collection to become the Western History Collections. In 1939, he co-authored Cherokee Cavaliers, 40 years of Cherokee history as told in the correspondence of the Ridge, Wadey, Boutonnot family. In 1955, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame inducted Gaston into its ranks. In 1957, for the centennial of Oklahoma statehood, he wrote four volumes titled The History of Oklahoma at the Golden Anniversary of Statehood. He spoke English, Spanish, and Portuguese. He wrote a number of textbooks on library science that were used in Latin American countries. Gaston spent the next 32 years in Central and South America building archives and training archivists. He was supported in his mission by the U.S. State Department, the United Nations, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the Government of Colombia. He worked in Brazil, Colombia, Panama, Nicaragua, and Guatemala. Gaston Litton published 25 books and six archival guides. In 1987, he moved back to Chickasha, Oklahoma, and he passed away in 1995. Cassandra Gaines. In 1953, Cassandra Gaines was born in Anaheim, California, and moved to Muskogee, Oklahoma at the age of 14. In 1971, she graduated in the first integrated class of Muskogee High School. Gaines' career began at the Muskogee Iron Works. She later served her city as a manager of the Muskogee Civic Center, before becoming the Muskogee Cultural and Diversity Liaison. In these positions, Gaines created Mama C's Soul Food in a Jar, an annual soul food event, authored Mama C's Soul Food Cookbook, implemented the All Black Towns Tours, managed the Roxy Theater, and pioneered African-American cultural tourism in Oklahoma. Governor Mary Fallon appointed her to the Board of Directors at the Oklahoma Arts Council. Gaines has received many tributes and awards. 
including the 2002 Oklahoma Heritage Distinguished Service, induction into the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame, High Tea with High Heels Award, and she was honored as Oklahoma's top 20 women. In 2015, she was the top honoree of the Williams Women of Inspiration. Cassandra Gaines died in October of 2016. The next year, the city of Muskogee dedicated the Civic Center Pavilion in her memory. Bruce Fisher was born in Chickasha in 1952. His family soon relocated to Oklahoma City. He attended the historically black Langston University and attained a master's in history at Texas Southern University in Houston. Fisher worked for Norwest, a banking holding company, before holding the position of Assistant Secretary of State for Oklahoma under Hannah Atkins. In 1980, when President Jimmy Carter appointed Atkins to the UN, Fisher became Acting Secretary of State. Later, he held the position of Director of Institutional Advancement for Langston University. Fisher joined the Oklahoma Historical Society in 1999 and spearheaded the organization's efforts to collect, preserve, and share the state's African-American history. In these efforts, he gathered artifacts, stories, and photos to create the Oklahoma History Center's African-American exhibit. Fisher and his team won a Telly Award for the documentary Second Street, the Heart of Oklahoma City. With his wife Sharon, he created theatrical productions related to black Oklahoma history, including Sween Low Sweet Chariot, New Chance City, and The Tempest and the Trial of Inman Page. In 2001, Bruce organized the first Kansas Colored Voluntary Infantry Civil War Reenactors Group, who participated in numerous Civil War events, including reenactments of the Battle of Honey Springs, Cabin Creek, and Living History programs. Fisher and OHS board member Shirley Nero resurrected the OHS Black Heritage Committee. Fisher and the committee have produced special programming at the Oklahoma History Center, including the Speaking the Truth lecture series that has featured prominent speakers such as Dr. John Hope Franklin, Dr. Jimmy Lewis Franklin, Dr. George Henderson, and many more. Bruce Fisher retired in 2014, but continued to support OHS programming and returned to help the Oklahoma Historical Society part-time in 2019, performing multicultural outreach. <laughs>